Bill O'Reilly here, Thursday, April 28th, 2022. You are listening to the O'Reilly Update. Here's what's happening across our nation. Putin says Russia will win in Ukraine. Many younger voters reject Joe Biden. California to raise taxes on gasoline. And 40% of people in Los Angeles do not feel safe in their own neighborhoods. Also, today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. We'll suggest why we all should remember. But first, the dictator Putin declaring Russia will remain in Ukraine until its military objectives are achieved. Putin addressing the Kremlin-controlled media, stating, quote, our goals in Ukraine will be unconditionally fulfilled. We will guarantee the security of the residents of the separatist regions, unquote. According to the UN, at least 20,000 soldiers and civilians have been killed since Putin launched the illegal invasion 63 days ago. Survey from Harvard says the country's younger voters are turning on President Biden. Just 41% of folks under the age of 30 now approve of his job performance, down 18% compared to last year. Less than half support Biden's position on Ukraine, just 34% give him good marks on the economy. A majority, however, still approve of Mr. Biden's handling of COVID. California lawmakers refusing to stop an annual gas tax increase scheduled for May 1st. The 5% hike in the Golden State will cost residents $9 billion a year. Drivers in California pay the highest taxes on fuel in the nation. The state charges 51 cents for every gallon sold. The funds are being used for green energy projects like high-speed rail, The average price for a gallon of gas in California, $4.21, and Sacramento will not suspend the new gas tax increase. Insanity. Four in ten folks living in L.A. say the homeless population makes them feel unsafe. The poll from The Hill finds a growing number of residents concerned with human waste, used needles, and people suffering from mental health problems. Roughly 75% of people living on the streets of L.A. are unstable, drug-addicted, or dangerous. The most in the USA. In a moment, the Holocaust. What really happened? Right back. Car Shield is a good product. They make it easy and affordable to protect your car from expensive repairs. Car Shield offers protection plans for around 100 bucks a month, and covers more parts than ever before. When you need a repair, you choose the mechanic, and CarShield handles the rest. CarShield also includes coast-to-coast roadside assistance, rental car options, and trip reimbursement at no extra cost. CarShield has helped millions of drivers. I am a member, and you can lock in a good price now. It will never go up if you do. Be protected from the rising cost of parts and repairs. Please go to carshield.com slash bill or call 800-391-8888 to save 10% on your plan and lock in your rate forever. That's carshield.com slash bill or 800-391-8888 to save 10%. A deductible may apply. Time now for the O'Reilly Update message of the day. It is Holocaust Remembrance Day in America, and sadly... Some folks have no idea what happened in Europe during World War II. Here are some facts. The Nazi persecution of Jews and others began when Hitler seized power in 1933. The Dachau concentration camp near Munich was established for political dissidents later that year, 33. It originally held 5,000 prisoners all opponents of Hitler. After the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, the Nazis established the first Jewish ghettos in Poland. Jews were not allowed to leave designated areas. In 1941, Germany created a specific task force, the SS, to murder Jews 
as the German army conquered sections of Russia, Ukraine, Hungary, and other nations. The so-called final solution to the Jewish question, that was extermination, was established by Nazi leaders at the Wannsee Conference in January 1942. It was ordered by Hitler. 40,000 concentration camps then were established throughout the Third Reich. The Nazis created six extermination camps solely for the purpose of murdering innocent human beings, including children. During the Holocaust, the Nazis killed six million Jews, three million Soviet prisoners of war, 250,000 people with disabilities, Down syndrome, things like that, 500,000 Roma gypsies, 3,000 Jehovah's Witnesses, 70,000 homosexuals. The aftermath of the Holocaust was that 200 Nazis were brought to trial in Nuremberg, Germany after the war. In all, 199 defendants were tried, 161 convicted, 37 sentenced to death. Today, there are still living Nazi war criminals scattered around the world. At least six men are currently wanted by the Israeli government for their roles in the Holocaust. Details about the hunt for these heinous individuals can be found in my book, Killing the SS. Now, the Holocaust is the most vivid example of evil in modern times. There is no excuse for what the Germans did. Stalin in the Soviet Union killed almost as many human beings as Hitler. Mao in China murdered more than the Nazis. Pol Pot in tiny Cambodia exterminated two million innocent people. Evil is a part of this world, and we should all acknowledge that and fight against it. My book, out May 3rd, Killing the Killers, tells you about Islamic terrorism, which is evil, to say the least. I'm Bill O'Reilly. I approve the message by writing it in a moment, something you might not know. As you know, inflation is almost out of control thanks to the policies of this administration. Retirement accounts are especially vulnerable right now. Because when inflation goes up, your dollar savings go down. So how do you protect your hard-earned wealth? Please call the people I trust at American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts against inflation by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver, and they make it easy. They are the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. All it takes is a quick call, and they will deliver physical gold and silver right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. 877-444-GOLD-GOLD. Or text GOLD to 65532. Again, 877-444-GOLD or text GOLD to 65532. Now, the O'Reilly Update brings you something you might not know. 18 years ago today, CBS News aired a report about torture at a U.S.-controlled prison in Iraq. The fallout changed public opinion about the war on terror and damaged America's reputation worldwide. Here is the story of Abu Ghraib. Under Saddam Hussein, that complex was notorious. It was the site of weekly executions by Saddam, torture, horrendous conditions. Most prisoners were Iraqi political dissidents or religious minorities. After Saddam's regime collapsed, coalition forces took over the facility and turned it into a prison controlled by the Pentagon. Beginning in November 2003, reports emerged about mistreatment at Abu Ghraib. 
On April 28th, 2004, 60 Minutes aired a scathing expose. CBS News released photographs of naked prisoners being beaten, electrocuted, and mocked by American soldiers. During that broadcast, officials from the Pentagon admitted several U.S. troops had committed human rights violations. One week later, President George W. Bush issued a public apology saying, quote, The United States is sorry for the humiliation suffered by the Iraqi prisoners and the humiliation suffered by their families. This does not represent the true heart of America, unquote. The Senate Armed Services Committee then launched an investigation. In total, 11 American soldiers were convicted of wrongdoing, most for dereliction of duty. Five senior officers were either demoted or resigned. The incident sparked a national discussion about the legal rights of terrorist suspects. It also exposed the existence of so-called black sites, a network of overseas prisons controlled by the CIA. And here's something else you might not know. So-called coerced interrogation still is used today against suspected terrorists. As I document in my new book, Killing the Killers. In fact, one of the worst terrorists ever, the ISIS leader al-Baghdadi, was captured and killed because of information gained by coerced interrogation. It's in Killing the Killers. Back after this. Supply chain issues have been a catalyst to bring high-tech manufacturing back to the USA. My tech guy, the founder of Brownstone Research, calls it the Great Recalibration and discusses it in his new newsletter, Near Future Report. For 35 years, Jeff Brown has helped his subscribers safely navigate volatile times to preserve and grow wealth. He also answers your most pressing questions like how to protect your retirement from inflation. What are the implications of a new digital currency and the Great Reset? What will the Fed do with interest rates? And what's going to happen in the stock market this year? Brownstone Research has been at the forefront of major market moves for 35 years. Let Jeff help you by signing up for his newsletter today at a 75% discount, a 12-month subscription, only $49. So please go to jeffbrowntech.com, jeffbrowntech.com, jeffbrowntech.com. Thank you for listening to the O'Reilly Update. I am Bill O'Reilly, no spin, just facts, and always looking out for you. (laughs) 